Hi and welcome to my college physics uh, topical video lectures. Today's video I just want to talk a bit about interpreting graphs in the context specifically of uh, projectile motion and this is really just to give everybody a sort of example on the um, one method of, of going through graphing data and then analyzing the results of our graph. Okay, so to aid me in this, I'm actually going to use the uh, Colorado um, physics simulations, the FET simulations, um, and this one is the projectile motion simulation um, lab, if you will. And so what we have here, we have a little target that I'm actually going to move out of the way because I'm not using it. We have a cannon here and the cannon um, basically just shoots off a projectile and I can control the angle that the cannon is um, to be shot at and I can control the initial speed of the projectile and I'm going to do this with no air resistance and with um, gravity um, gravitational acceleration set to 9.80 um, and then Essentially, like these other parameters don't matter so much for what I'm trying to do today, uh, nor does w what we decide to shoot out of the cannon. Um, because what I want to do is just put this cannon at some angle like this, and then for different values of speed at this angle, I'm going to shoot the object, and then I'm going to use this uh, measurement des device to um, tell me what the range of the object is and what its height is. Okay, so in some sense, this is like doing a little mini lab or a take home um, simulation lab um, just to illustrate this example. Okay. So I guess we'll start with an initial speed of six meters per second. This right here is, I believe, the shoot button. So if we push this, then we get a little um, projectile that's moved along like so. Um, and then, whoops, I zoomed in a little too much there because I need this in order to tell me um, how far the thing has gone. So the range here is 1.84 meters. The time of flight is 1.18 meters. And I suspect that if we put it up here, it would tell us what the um, maximum height is. So to track all this I'm going to um, use a little spreadsheet um, that I'm just going to enter my data into. Oops, let's go ahead and align the spreadsheet. And so let's do this. Um, we'll say initial angle, we'll just put up here, is 75 degrees. And then down here we can have um, launch speed or, or initial speed. And that of course is in meters per second. We can have um, range or horizontal range. And that should be in meters. We can have um, time of flight. Uh, that should be in seconds, and then we can have maximum height attained, and that's in meters. Okay, so what I want to do, um, ideally with making these graphs, in some sense the more data the merrier, um, but of course there's the practical consideration of how much time do you want to spend doing your project. In general, as a rule of thumb, I prefer when people try to collect something like eight or nine data points, 10 data points, something like that, to make their graph because I have found that if I don't specify um, a minimum somewhere in there, then people will collect like three data points and then lo and behold, they'll plot them and they'll say, oh, I don't know whether this makes a line or a parabola. And it'll turn out that the three data points are very close to each other so that a line of best fit maybe looks pretty good. 
And of course with three data points, there is always one parabola that will fit exactly those three points. So by having more data than these, it's, it becomes easier to distinguish. Are we doing a line? Are we doing a parabola? Maybe is it exponential? Is it inverse square? Stuff like that. So let's come back over to our um, simulation. So of course the height was 1.71 for the maximum height and then range 1.84 times 1.18. So let's put those in um, range 1.84 uh, time of flight was 1.18. I believe that the maximum height was 1.71 and of course what was our initial speed on this thing it was 1.18 uh, seconds okay so now what we want to do is basically just repeat this for let's say eight um, values of speed so this was six meters a second the maximum is 30 so, um, you know, we could do every four meters a second from zero. We could do every two from six, something like that. Maybe every three um, starting from six. So next value, initial speed, nine. We launch it. We'll just keep adding three each time until we get to 30. Okay, and so then basically we just keep doing this and filling these in until we've filled out this table. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording and just get the data because nobody necessarily wants to just watch me take every single data point this way. So let me pause it and fill the data. All right, so I've recorded basically all of the um, data for all of these uh, shots. So one, two, three, four, five, plus some shots that were in here that were shorter range um, into my uh, data table. So, you know, the next step obviously is going to be to make a plot. And anytime, whoops, anytime that we make a plot um, for this class, we really want to do a scatter plot of some sort. And, um, we actually need to do several different um, scatter plots because these are not all plotting the uh, same thing, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to um, plot, for example, the range as a function of the initial speed. So here's my initial speed. And then let's add in our horizontal range and always a good idea to have a nice um, uh, title to it. So we could say something like horizontal range as a function of initial speed at 75 degrees um, projectile motion object in free fall. Now, something like that is an acceptable title and then x-axis was initial speed and y-axis was horizontal range. Okay so I've got this plot right here and um, obviously this is not linear. Oops. If we were to look at the plot here, this obviously has made some sort of a curve. If I drew a straight line, and in fact I can try to put a trend line on here. Um, it is insert trend line right here. You can see that I can get it to go through a handful of the points, but it very obviously doesn't go through all of the points. Okay. So let's take the trend line off. And what we actually want to do um, is basically try to replot it but linearize it. Okay. So to linearize 
horizontal range uh, uh, versus initial speed, we might try squaring one of the axes. Uh, for example, uh, initial oops, speed squared. So this is in meters per second squared. And so what we do is we basically just square all of the values of initial speed and then come down here and replot. And to replot it, we basically just um, get our data ranges. And instead of having the speeds as our x values, now we want to use the speed squared as our x values. And um, so this maybe should be initial speed squared. I kind of left off the units, uh, which was not ideal. We really should have the units on these axes. So, whoops, come on. And probably the same is true up here, right? This right here should be a speed, again, in meters per second. And uh, the range should actually be in meters on this one. Okay. Now let's take these data that I've replotted and add a trend line. So insert trend line. And I'm also going to go ahead and show the equation on the graph. And I'm going to um, make the equation a little less daunting by removing a few digits from it um, so that we just see a couple significant figures worth. Okay, so now I have this um, basically the function of what's the horizontal range as a function of the initial speed squared. And so now I want to be able to interpret the graph. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch here. This is not going to be like a well-drawn graph, but the point is a sketch and, and a few handwritten equations. So um, you know that the range equation, if, if you have symmetry um, in your motion, in other words, you're landing at the initial height you shot from, your range equation basically looks like this. Um, R, or in other words, delta x, um, it should be equal to your initial speed squared times the sine of twice whatever your angle initially is divided by free fall acceleration g. Okay? So we know that this is true. Um, so with that in mind, this should have some form of equation y equals mx plus b. So you can have a plus zero here uh, for your plus b part of the equation. Now, because to make it a straight line, I have to square the speed axis, it follows that whatever is left over in this equation must be equivalent to the slope of that line. So here is the slope of that line. Basically this is saying slope of range versus initial speed squared. M is equal to sine of 2 theta initial divided by g. Now let's say that we wanted to use this to measure our value of g. Again, we set it so that g would be 9.8, but maybe we don't know what g is. We just have these graphs. This suggests that g is equal to sine of 2 theta initial divided by slope. So coming into this um, graph that we've made, slope is 0 0.051, and we use the units of 
the y-axis divided by the units of the x-axis. So that's 0 0.051 meters divided by meters squared per second squared. So that means that our actual um, slope here, we have sine of 2 times, we were shooting at 75 degrees, so 2 times 75 divided by m which is 0 0.051 and the units we did just determined were seconds squared per meter squared. So now basically you put all these into your calculator um, so we have the sine of 2 times 75 um, and then that should be divided by 0 0.051 so whatever we get, that should be our answer in meters per second squared. I don't know how well this will tend to show up on the screen, but this right here is what comes on the calculator. Uh, keeping two significant figures, it says 9.8 um, meters per second squared. This is in the denominator, so to move stuff into the numerator the meters uh, goes to the numerator and the second squared stays here. This was meters, not meters squared. Okay, so I've got a value for my slope, uh, or, or of g from my slope. Now I can do this again using the other two sets of data that we have here. Um, for example, um, what if I wanted to plot the uh, maximum height attained instead of the horizontal range. Okay, so the maximum height attained, um, I'm going to have to sort of reselect my data. So data ranges, the x values are still the same. I'm changing my y values, and my y values are now the maximum heights attained. I need to also go ahead and relabel. So this is now maximum height in meters. This is now maximum height. Um, and of course, the name, I should also change the name. Um, is now maximum height. Okay. And again, this ended up being parabolic. Um, so again, I could do the same trick of squaring an axis. So this is now maybe initial speed squared. Um, and this is in meters per second squared. And our new, uh, whoops, our new data range has y, has uh, x values from this column. And once again, it's linear. If I put in a um, trend line with an equation of fit to it, um, let's see, show equation. And once again, I can kind of come in here and change the number to something that doesn't have quite so many digits. Okay. So um, what should the maximum height be for a given uh, launch speed? Well, you're basically solving for a system of equations. Um, one way to do it is to say that y uh, maximum happens when v um, is zero. So when means time uh, t uh, the speed is zero. We have two equations. Y is equal to one half g t squared negative because that's downward um, uh, plus v initial time plus y initial and then we also have v is equal to our v final 
uh, is equal to V initial plus AT. So negative G times T plus V initial. And you can, of course, combine these two equations to get 2 times G times delta Y is V final squared minus V initial squared. And again, this is negative because G is downward. Um, your final speed is zero if delta Y equals your maximum. Okay, so this basically is telling me that delta Y max is equal to V final squared uh, uh, minus V initial squared over 2g or in other words since this is 0 it's equal to v initial squared over 2g uh, with one caveat which is that this v initial is actually v initial y um, and this v final is v final y so I'll go ahead and put those y's in this is also a final so this is in turn equal to V initial squared times sine of theta initial squared divided by 2G. All right, so that suggests, again, if we use uh, Y equals MX plus B um, for this line, and also y equals um, this equation v initial squared sine squared theta initial over 2g so let's write that like this sine squared theta initial over 2g times v initial squared again plus zero so the b in this case is zero the V initial and the X are equivalent to each other. The Y's are equivalent to each other. And so what that leaves is slope should be sine squared theta initial over 2G. So slope M is sine squared theta initial over 2G. And therefore G is equal to sine squared theta initial over 2 times slope. So this is sine squared of 75 degrees divided by 2 times the slope. And so coming over to here, our slope is now 0.048. And again, the units are going to end up being seconds squared per meter for slope. And so we get a value of, let's go to our calculators, um, sine of 75 quantity squared divided by 2 times 0.048. And this is giving me a slope of basically 9.72. Uh, so we could say that this one is measuring G to be about 9.7 meters per second squared. And I imagine if I took more digits of precision, I would actually get a, a nearer value to the slope using this simulation. We could also do this with time of flight, but the video is kind of running long. So I'll just kind of leave time of flight as something for you to do on your own. Um, but hopefully uh, this little video will help all of you who are trying to understand how to interpret graphs. Um, how to, what, what do I mean by linearizing a graph? Um, basically that is this process of changing our axes so that we go from not a line to a line. And in this case, changing the axis meant square the speed axis both times. But in principle, 
it could involve taking a reciprocal, it could involve um, taking a logarithm, etc. All right, so that should actually um, be something for all of you to get a good start with. Um, so hopefully this helps with future labs and data analysis. Um, let me know if you want some more like this. Um, and uh, thanks for watching, I guess. Until next time.